Greetings, Brent from EpicBattleAxe.com, and look what showed up in the mail today. Hmm, DualShock 4, hmm. So, I thought what I might do is uh, a quick unboxing vid here, uh, open it up, give you my uh, impressions, and then maybe, if my luck holds, uh, hook it up to uh, the PC and uh, maybe play some games on it. But uh, we'll see about that. Let's, uh, let's get it open first. Okay, so... Let's get this thing open. I've already uh, sliced the stickers on the side, so uh, we're just ready to dive right in and see what's in the box. That's what's in the box. And that, for whatever it's worth. Hey. <laughs> hey. Wow. That feels, oh, that feels really great. That feels terrific to hold, um, and it, uh, ooh, ooh, the analog sticks feel great, too. Okay, a lot more resistance than the PlayStation 3. A lot more resistance than the DualShock 3 has. I'm sure that some of that is just down to the controller being new and not being broken in yet, but it's a lot more. Not as much resistance as the 360, a little bit less than that, but a lot more than the DualShock 3. And the, the throw distance, the throw distance is about the same as the 360 controller. Like the, the amount, uh, you know, the distance you can actually like push the analog stick is very, very similar to that. It feels very similar to the 360. Um, triggers feel really good. As a matter, as a matter of fact... That's interesting. Okay, so hang on. Let me uh, let me turn off autofocus for a second, or turn on autofocus for just a second. Let me see if I can get this to show up. There's just a slight amount of curvature to the triggers. Like in all the pictures that I'd seen prior, they just look straight to me, but there's just a little bit of curvature there, which is great because they feel um, they feel really good under your fingers. So that is cool. Oh yeah, nice clicky buttons. Oh, that D-pad's gorgeous. Hot open, hot open. Shoulder buttons feel great. Trackpad, trackpad's clickable. I guess that makes sense. Um, those buttons feel solid. That's kind of interesting. Um, the the button height on this here. Let me uh, let me switch on autofocus again. See if I can get a, a close up of this. Um, I don't know how well this is coming across, but that share button, like, that is just, it feels like it's either the same height or maybe it's just slightly lower than the top of the trackpad. So when your finger glides off the trackpad onto that, it's a pretty good transition. I, I guess the, the main thing with that is you're not accidentally going to hit that. Uh, you have to, uh, you have to work to, uh, to get to it just a little bit, but... Boy, that feels that feels fantastic to hold. If this thing plays half as good as it feels, that is really going to be something. I mean, just look at look at uh, okay, just like gripping it, like right here. This is like how I'd normally have it. You know, got the the heel of my thumb on the X button, and you can see how much of the grip, you know, is, is filling my palm, and then. If I go to the DualShock 3, same thing again, heel of my thumb on the X button. I mean, it's like it's like half as much. I mean, like my pinky is is almost got nothing to grab onto. I'm basically like hanging on with my my ring finger, and I'm I'm really having to pull it into uh, into my palm. I'm having to like really work to like hang on to it. And you can see like where the the thumbsticks they fall like under the heels of my palm instead of the tips of or excuse me the heels of my thumb instead of the tips of my thumbs. And over here, it's like right on the pad of my thumb. Feels great. Again, you know, that that grip. I've got plenty to hang on to. The buttons and the D-pad fall under my thumbs very naturally. I mean, that is just, that is fantastic. On every level, that is an improvement. It feels really, really terrific. 
there's a, there's a bit of a texture. I don't know if this is coming across. This part right here is smooth, the way the DualShock 3 is, but um, there's just a bit of a texture on the back side here. I think you can see it right there. Very fine texture, and um, that uh, it, it just, I don't know, it gives you like a really good feeling of security, that the controller's not going to go anywhere on you. Um, so that is pretty cool. There's the PlayStation button and here is the um, the uh, the headphone port and then I'm not I'm not sure what the extension port is for then over on this side we've got the um, got the micro US or excuse me uh, mini USB port and the uh, the light bar so that's that's it my uh, my first impressions are very very positive uh, I really want to get this thing hooked up now and see if uh, see if I can play some games with it. So uh, let's go plug it up uh, to charge and then see if we can get it uh, connected to the PC and, uh, and play something. Welcome back my friends. Uh, we are ready to do this but I am going to warn you now that it is a bit of a mixed bag. I've been uh, playing around a little bit with the DualShock 4 and the PC and um, well, I, let me just show you uh, what's going on. So, the most direct way to get the uh, the DualShock 4 connected to the PC is to hook it up uh, with a USB cable. So I've got a little uh, I've got a little mini USB cable here that I'm borrowing from my wife's Kindle. So let me just get that plugged in, and you're going to see the light bar came on just one time there. Now I've seen other videos online, and it seems like Usually it comes on and stays on, but mine is not doing that. That may be, I don't know, that may be indicative of some of the uh, the trouble I've been having. But anyway, so I've got it hooked up now. So in control panel, if we go to devices and printers, you can see I've got a, a wireless controller here. So let's right click on that, go to game controller settings, and then properties. Okay, and now we've got, now we've got the test window. And this is a, uh, this is good stuff here. So if we uh, start moving the analog stick, you can see that um, we're getting uh, we're getting a reaction there. Same with uh, same with the other analog stick, triggers, D-pad, all very good. Buttons all showing up just the way they ought to be. So. Windows is recognizing it, and uh, and that's all very good. And and actually, based on this, you know, you can see if you watch the uh, if you watch the X Y axis crosshair there, I mean, it's got like no dead zone. Like just as soon as I touch it, it moves. So as far as the uh, the concern about uh, the dead zone, I'd say that Sony's definitely got that fixed. But anyway, that unfortunately is not. Uh, that is not the end of the story. So, I tried to uh, I tried to play Batman: Arkham Origins, and uh, it just it just did not happen. Just didn't even recognize the controller was hooked up. So I decided to do something a little bit simpler. I went for uh, for Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures here, and I figured that'd be a um, I figured that'd be a safe bet. Let me turn it down just a hair. Since it, it, in theory would only use the D-pad and two of the buttons, so. It does, but unfortunately, the default mapping for the PlayStation 4 um, is is not great. So you know, you think like maybe options or share or something would be your start button, but it's not. It's actually L2, and then um, it maps or, or button one on the controller is square. Normally, you would think of X being the primary button, but those are kind of reversed here. Square is one, X is two. So that's not like such a huge thing in a game like this where. Uh, you know where you're only going to be using two buttons, but um, anyway, so I played uh, I played this enough to just kind of get a feel for it, and the one thing I can say is that uh, as far as like emulator games go, this thing is going to be my new favorite uh, controller for this type of game because the D-pad is just fantastic. I mean, you can just make all the you know the little minute adjustments that uh, that this kind of game. Uh, demands, or you know, if you're actually playing, you know, uh, old old school uh, games on emulator, this thing is really, really fantastic. So, I uh, I gotta say that I'm pretty 
I'm pretty happy with that part of it, but uh, unfortunately, that's not the uh, not the only kind of game that I'm, I'm likely to be playing with this thing. So uh, the next step that I went through, and let me just go ahead, uh, let me just go ahead and close this. The next step was I really wanted to try to figure out a way to get it, you know, working with like Batman or something where I could really test out, you know, the analog sticks and the whole controller. And I've been playing Batman on my uh, my 360 uh, controller, so it would be like a good direct comparison. So I went and I did a little uh, did a little research, and this is what I came up with. Uh, this is a uh, an Xbox 360 controller emulator. If you um, if you just search on Google for X360 CE. The first hit should be this website at code.google.com, and um, you want to go to the download section. You'll need to grab the uh, the app, and then you'll need to grab the uh, the libraries. There's 64-bit and 32-bit versions of the libraries, and uh, from what they're saying, uh, you know you might end up you, you're probably going to end up needing both. But they're saying that most games are 32-bit, so that's important. Uh, that's important to keep in mind. There is a wiki on here that's got um, got a how to uh, like a how-to guide, but I didn't find it exceptionally useful. Actually, the the help tab in the application itself, I thought did a little bit better job of explaining it. So, let me show you basically what ends up happening here. Uh, you end up downloading the application and some of the libraries. This is the application here. What you have to do is you have to copy this. You have to make a copy of that application inside of the directory that's got the game executable that you want to run. So in this case Batman Arkham Origins and you know the way you can get to that in Steam is just uh, right click and go to properties, local files, browse local files and then you have to hunt around a little bit. In this case it's single player binaries Win32. So anyway uh, in the directory that's got the uh, the executable file for the game you're trying to run you're gonna have to uh, drag in a copy of the uh, X360CE application. Uh, and then you see these two files here. These are actually, uh, this is a DLL and an INI file that uh, that the application creates the first time that you run it. So once you've got this in the directory with the game that you want to run, you launch the application. As long as your uh, controller is connected through Windows, then the application is going to recognize it. And then what you can do is use this application to map your controller's uh, analog sticks, D-pad, buttons, etc., to the uh, to the 360 controller, and this will emulate it so that the game thinks it's a 360 controller. Uh, this is the help tab I mentioned. If you actually launch the application and read through the help tab, I think that this is I think this does a better job of explaining uh, what you need to do, uh, at least more so than the website. But anyway, once you get this uh, once you get this configured and set up, you close it. You don't want to run it while the game's running, and then you launch the game. And uh, once you've done all that, then uh, the game will see this as a uh, an Xbox 360 controller. Now, the only downside to this application, as far as I can tell anyway, is that basically you have to have a copy of that application in the game directory for every game that you need to uh, to emulate this for. So it, it would take a it would take a bit of time to set it up with uh, with every single game. It's certainly not as Certainly not as good a solution as you know having uh, you know basic OS support for this through some sort of I don't know maybe through some sort of driver or something. But um, anyway, so the first time I loaded this up with the uh, with the controller connected, you know I was just hitting buttons and nothing was happening, absolutely nothing. But now I've got Start Map to the Options button, so when I hit it, hey, it works. Look at that. So I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to continue my game here, and um, okay. So uh, yeah, here we go, and um, and as you can see, it is working. So uh, let me see what do, what do I got here. I got a couple of guys down there. Maybe I'll just head down there and mix it up a little bit. That that would be fine. All right, so anyway, uh, yeah, let's just uh, let's just do this here. Oh, look out!
I can tell you right now that this is working out just fine. The uh, the sticks feel great, and uh, I guess I need to pay a little bit more attention to playing and not talking. But uh, the sticks feel great, and uh, the uh, the controller's super responsive. I mean, it feels exactly the way that you know you'd expect it to. And um, all right, there you have it. It's really good. I mean, I, I'm I'm really really pleased with everything that the controller's doing. The only problem is that um, the only problem is that I've got to have it hooked up uh, through the cable, which I'm I'm not super happy about. So of course that leads to Bluetooth, and I actually do have. Let me unplug this. I actually do have a Bluetooth adapter uh, on my computer, but um, for whatever reason I am not having. I am not having an easy time getting this connected. So, from what uh, from what I've read, the uh, to put this in pairing mode, you hold down the share button and the uh, the PlayStation button for a few seconds, and then the light bar should start uh, strobing. So let me do that. Okay, so there's the light bar strobing, and in theory, I should now be able to add this as a device. So let me. Open up this, add a device. Okay, so there it's got the wireless controller. And I'm going to say next. And basically this is um, this is where the process can either go right or go wrong. All right, now just successfully added. I've done this two other times before I actually hit record, and it didn't work either of those times. So let's try, let's try doing that test. Yep, all right. So I've got it connected. Or at least it looks like it's connected as far, you know, it's in the Bluetooth device menu here, but I cannot get into the, I can't get into the, uh, into the, to the, into the settings to see if it, uh, if I can test it. And, and it just disconnected. Okay, so this is the very first time I did this, this is exactly what happened. Like it connected for like just, you know, like, like a few seconds and then it automatically disconnected. All right, so now if I hit the PlayStation button again bar comes on and I get uh, a notice that a Bluetooth device is trying to connect I say I want to allow that it says that it's been successfully added so I close that I right click I go to game controller settings and again I got I got nothing let me see what happens if I opened up um, let's see if, what happens if I open up the 360 emulator and yeah, and it doesn't show that the controller is connected. Okay, so it's stopped responding. And then this is going to disappear in just a second if I'm if I'm right. Yep. So for some reason, um, I cannot I cannot get the controller to stay paired uh, with the computer via Bluetooth. And I don't know if that's something with the controller or something you know with my uh, my computer, my Bluetooth. But in any case, that is the situation that I'm faced with right now. So. Uh, with the uh, the Xbox 360 controller emulator software and uh, the USB cable, I can um, I can uh, I can get some uh, some games uh, going with it, and I can honestly say that it feels it feels really fantastic. I uh, I think that uh, if I can get this working reliably uh, wirelessly, it's probably going to replace my uh, 360 controller. Uh, as far as uh, games on the PC that I use a controller for, so um, I'm really, really, uh, I'm really down with it. But I, I think that uh, ultimately, what needs to happen is uh, we need to see some sort of uh, driver or something from Sony that supports uh, I can't remember, like X input or whatever the standard on uh, on Windows is called. But something like that, I think, would uh, would probably alleviate some of these problems. And you know, who knows? Uh, you know, the community might step in and uh, you know something like Motion Joy. As an example, you know they might be able to uh, write a driver or something for this that would uh, that would uh, create a, a little bit more widespread support, and then obviously uh, game developers, you know, supporting the controller directly in their games. But uh, I got to say that uh, if if everyone else is as pleased with this controller as I am, I have to imagine the demand is going to be there for uh, for Sony and 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 developers to uh, to support it because it's a uh, it's a great feeling controller it's a great playing controller and it's just made me all the more excited to uh, to get my PlayStation 4 
and uh, to be able to use it as it was intended. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you uh, got a DualShock 4, if you've got any uh, stories of your own about getting it hooked up, if you had success where uh, where I've not, uh, then please uh, let me know about it. If you got any tips or uh, or ideas that I should try to uh, get it going, I would love to hear them in the comments. So uh, hit me back, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing what you guys have to say. Stay sharp.